In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today is, of course, and I know that this is no surprise considering my giant Thanksgiving background here, uh, it's going to be on Thanksgiving. Because it is something that is repeated over and over again in the Bible. I think that it's something that we may not really focus on as much as we should because the Bible talks about it a lot. Old Testament, New Testament, thanksgiving and gratitude are very important virtues to the Christian faith. And I think that a great example of that, especially with our theme of giving thanks in dark times, comes from the book of Colossians. So we'll look at Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. Paul writes, Devote yourselves to prayer. Keep alert with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up, uh, open up to us as a door for the word, so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ, for which I have also been imprisoned, that I may make it clear in the way that I ought to speak. There's a couple things that I want you to notice about this verse. First of all, in the, the part where he's talking about thanksgiving, he is advising the church at Colossae. He is advising them to devote themselves to prayer and always done with an attitude of thanksgiving. Now, why is that? I think that the reason that's so important is because he's saying, we're facing a lot of adversity. We're facing a lot of things that we don't need to deal with, a lot of things that are keeping us from sharing the Word of God with others. And so what I'm asking you to do is to devote yourself to prayer. What does it mean to devote yourself to something? It means you take it seriously. It means that you do so regularly, constantly, that it's something that you have made a commitment, you have made an oath to do. He's saying, I don't just want you to pray for this, you know, like a one-off prayer request. Hey, would you say a quick prayer for me? Okay. Nothing wrong with that. But that's not what Paul is asking for. He's saying, I want you to devote yourselves, to make it an integral part of your spiritual life, to pray for us, to pray for our well-being, and to pray for the success of our mission, and to do so with an attitude of thanksgiving. Now, that implies a couple things. First of all, it implies that to keep alert with this attitude of thanksgiving that Paul is talking about takes diligence. You see, it's not a light switch that you can turn on and off. You can't just be thankful for something. There's a difference in saying thank you and living thanksgiving out, having that attitude of thanksgiving. Because being grateful for something, saying thank you and thanking somebody, that's a great thing. That's something that all of our moms told us to do when we were little, and hopefully it's something that carried on through adulthood. It is a good quality to have. But it's not sufficient for the Christian faith. You see, to do thanks the way that God wants us to give thanks, it's constant. And it changes you. It's an integral part of your spiritual life. It's not something that you just do once something good happens. You know, it's not like your parents taught you the very rudimentary sort of childlike thanks that they gave you, which, I mean, is a good starting point. Don't get me wrong. But it's not like that where somebody gives you a present or somebody gives you food and you say thank you. It's where you live a life that is changed and altered because you have gratitude for them. What was being instructed here is, look at what Jesus Christ has done for you. Because of that, I want you to devote yourself to prayer. And I want you to live a life in a constant state of thanksgiving and be alert and intentional with it because this isn't something that is just going to happen. You have to make a conscious, constant effort to devote yourself to gratitude. Because as humans, we're naturally selfish. We naturally forget to say thank you. That's why you have to teach children to do it. Because if, it was, if our natural state was gratitude, you wouldn't have to tell a kid to do that. They would have it on their own and maybe learn not to be grateful later. It's not like that. 
when you give something to a very young child, they're not thinking about being grateful. They're just like, give me mine. That's the attitude of us two and three-year-olds because they haven't learned that yet. But the truth is, as adults, we're not that much more mature. Most of the time we're given something, especially when it comes to God, we'll pray for something and, and get what we want, and then we forget to say thank you afterward. I know I've been guilty of it a lot. And I've, you know, try to do better. But gratitude takes a certain level of devotion and intentionality. And then Paul asks, not only to do this with yourselves in your own spiritual life, but praying at the same time for us as well. And this goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the program with Calvin Coolidge. You remember in his address, he said that we need to be worthy of our prosperity. We need to use the gifts and the power that God has given to us as a blessing to bless other people and to help them. Paul is saying exactly the same thing here in a different way. He's saying, when you have this attitude of thanksgiving, when you are keeping alert, when you're constantly devoting yourself to prayer, hey, include us in that because we want those blessings to be showered on us so that we can use them to bring the word of God to other people. They didn't want blessings for their own prosperity. They didn't want blessings so that they could afford that really nice house out in Jerusalem or anything like that. They were saying, hey, would you please kind of help us here because we're facing some adversity. We're facing some people that are trying to prevent us from spreading God's word, and we need God's power. We need your prayers. We need your thanksgiving and your blessings so that we can use that as tools to further the cause of the kingdom. And he said, and also, and I think that this shows a lot of Paul's humility, Pray that I will be good at this. Pray that God is going to give me the right things to speak. Pray that um, pray that all of the things that I have been given, that I use them correctly, and that God will make it clear what I am going to say. And in the context of that, you may notice in verse 3 that he says, for which I have also been in prison, talking about trying to spread the word. Paul wrote this from a jail cell. You talk about being grateful in dark times, it doesn't get much darker than what Paul was going through. I mean, at this point in his ministry, he'd already been beaten, stoned, chased out of t countless towns, and now he's in prison for doing the right thing. He's in prison for doing exactly what God told him to do. When you hear the phrase, no good deed goes unpunished, boy, Paul lived that on a daily basis. He was constantly trying to do the right thing, doing what God asked him to do, and constantly suffering for it. And you look at that and you go, how does somebody like that keep going? This verse tells us. It's because he devoted himself to prayer and stayed alert with an attitude of being grateful, an attitude of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's a great holiday. But it can't just be a one-day thing, especially not for a Christian. Maybe it's a time to focus a little more on it than other times of the year. But ultimately, if we're going to be able to dodge the, if we're going to be able to dodge and withstand the assaults of darkness that come on us on a daily basis, one of the things that we're going to have to have is being grateful for the things that we've been given, and to have that always in the back of our mind, and to have a sense of peace that comes from seeing those blessings as they really are, and to remember that they come from God. Ultimately, it's what kept Paul going. It kept him moving, and it gave him the correct perspective he needed to continue to soldier on and to spread the word of God. And he was grateful for the blessings that he had been given because it allowed him to spread the word to more people, which made him more grateful. And so there was this exchange going on between him and God, where God would bless him so that he could continue to do God's work, and in return, Paul would offer prayers and thanks for that. And in return, God would continue to give more blessings and look out for him, and that's the way that it constantly gets. See, Paul could have complained. Paul had a lot of things that he would have been very well justified and humanized for complaining about. And he's looking at it and saying, would you please pray that I get out of prison just so I can spread the word of God more? Actually, he doesn't even pray to get out of prison. He prays to give him the opportunity to spread the word of God to others. And you know what? Paul, in the account of Acts and in several other historic accounts that we have, he did that from a prison cell. 
He didn't even necessarily say, hey, pray that I get out of bondage. He said, just pray that I have the opportunity to spread the word no matter where I am. That can only come from somebody that has a deep and abiding sense of gratitude. And it's one that if we want to be effective torchbearers of the cause of Christ, it's something that we have to adopt too. Happy Thanksgiving. Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.